If you've got a caravan, sort of similar to this one, and it's been sold to you as an off-grid caravan, but once you went camping for the first time, you realized it's not as off-grid as you might have thought it is. Uh, let me show you what we usually do to properly get you off-grid. Come and have a look in here. So what we've got in here is an electric system that has been installed by the manufacturer. This electric system here was partially installed by the manufacturer, so you see here. This unit included all the charging and also the power distribution. What we do is we take the charging away from this unit, but we leave the power distribution, so all the circuits of the caravan are still running through here, all the DC circuits and the water level monitoring, everything th still works through that. And you can still switch things on and off. There's a monitor right next to the door where you can control the caravan. But then we add a different charging system. So you can see in here we've put a red arc, a 40 amp DC DC charger. We put a 50 amp MPPT roof solar controller. There's a 3 kVA multi plus inverter and charger. So this unit gives power to the whole 240 volt system of the caravan. So when you're off grid, you can just turn 240 volt back on and everything starts to work just as if you were plugged into the grid somewhere. And the next cool thing is, this has also got a 120 amp battery charger built in. So in case you are at a caravan park, all you need to do is put the external plug in cable in, the 15 amp cable. This unit, when it's turned on, will detect that, push the 240 volt through directly to the power points and all the excess energy that is not needed will be used by this unit and it will be pumped into the battery systems. I'll show you the batteries a little bit later. What we've also got here is our Serbo GX. All the charging components are connected to this unit. And uh, we've got a display on the wall there. Over there, we can monitor our whole charging system so we can see solar charge. There's nothing happening because we're in a workshop at the moment. We see where the battery's at. We can turn 240 volt on through here. Just turn the AC mode to on and 240 volt starts to work. We could now run the air conditioner and here you hear everything starts to click in. We can also regulate how much current we can import from external. So I can tell the unit that I only want to import 10 amp because I'm connected to a 10 amp socket or I can dial it up, oh, my big fingers, or I can also dial it up to 15 amp and accept just in case I'm connected to 15 amp outlet or let's say you've only got a 2000 watt generator and you want to run of that, you just dial it down to seven and a half amps because that is about as much as a 2000 watt generator will produce. And now you run off your generator. The cool thing about that is this unit will prevent your generator from stalling. So if you're using two and a half or 3000 watt, what the inverter will do is it will help the generator. So the generator will produce about 2000 watt and the unit, the inverter will produce another thousand watt. Once the peak load goes away and the generator is ticking along again, the unit will take everything it can from the generator and charge into your batteries to get them up and full as soon as possible. And once they are full, you can pretty much turn the generator off again in case you haven't got enough solar production and run off the batteries. That is really cool. Another thing that we integrate into this is remote accessibility. So you would have probably seen this little unit here. This unit has got a SIM card in it and it allows us to remote dial into the system. So these customers are not really tech savvy that we've done this uh, caravan build for. And they said, what if something happens? What if we are out there and we don't know what to do? And I told them, as soon as you can call us, we have got access to your van and we can remote dial into the system and we can do remote diagnostics on the whole system. So 
we can get them onto the right path, we can do software updates, or if a part is faulty, we can direct them to the next auto-electric place and we can tell the auto-electricians what they need to do to diagnose this van, which I think is really handy and I only know about Victron, who actually has got the capability of doing such things. If you do want to remote monitor the system, you can either do it yourself with the Victron software that is available and we can do the same thing. So if you have a look on the big screen here, this is the van that I've just been talking about. So the van is not in our workshop anymore. It's back with the customer and I can see the solar production. I can see DC power. Uh, I would be able to turn the inverter on and off. You can also see a lot more detail in the advanced list. So you got widgets in here. This is solar production in great detail. We can add things here as well. For example, with the battery monitor, I can enable certain widgets. I can enable that and then scroll down. And you've got your battery summary right here now so and there's there's plenty more widgets that you can enable uh, so the cool thing with that is we can remote diagnose the system just in case you're on the road somewhere we can log in we can see what's going on if something isn't working the right way I can even open up the remote console that does actually take a while to load but with the remote console I can control the screen itself. So here in the remote control, you can now see, I can see exactly the same thing. It's as if I would be controlling the screen itself right there and then. And I can operate the touch screen. I can go into settings. As you can see, I can go into the menu itself and change settings in the menu if I want to. Uh, very, very handy. So this, even though it has got a bit of lag on it because all the communication has to go through the mobile network. It can also be through a Wi-Fi network. And the cool thing is there's also an app for your smartphone. It's called the Victron VRM app. So you could be on the other side of the world, you can still monitor your system. You can do exactly the same thing that I've just showed you on the computer over the phone. And you can even do things uh, like have a switch from your door wired to the Serbo GX, like a door contact switch, and you get a text message or an email just in case a door opens or closes. Or you can use it for all sorts of other things as well. Monitor temperatures, monitor tank levels, it's all possible and it's all possible through a Wi-Fi or a data connection, uh, a cellular connection. That's what we install that little 3G, 4G modem for. Uh, can be handy for a customer to do it himself, but also for us to have remote access to the system. One thing you would have noticed is there's no batteries in here. The reason for that is there's a new standard that's come uh, in last November in Australia and that says that we cannot install batteries in a habitable space anymore. So this all is deemed a habitable space. So we have to install batteries outside of this space. In this instance, we've installed the batteries into a storage compartment in the front that is not connected to the habitable space. That's one option. There's also another option. You can still install batteries inside a habitable space if they are in a gas tight compartment that's vented to the outside. I'll show you a bit more about that because there have been a lot of comments on our videos. What are you guys doing in regards to the new standard? And we usually show videos that we've recorded months ago. Uh, so we've been working with the new standards already and I'll show you what we are doing. If you have a look inside here, We've separated the charging system and the inverter system from the batteries. So the batteries are now outside of the habitable space in the front compartment right here, which according to the standard is an option uh, for an installation. 
now. Just in case that is not possible, just in case you still have to put the batteries under the bed, here is what we've come up with. So we usually use the 200 amp hour Amtron batteries and these boxes that we've made here fit one 200 amp hour battery. This box here fits two 200 amp hour batteries. And what it basically is, is a battery compartment with a hold down to make sure the battery can't move. It is, it is gas type, this compartment. When it gets assembled with cables, it gets sealed. These connections on here get sealed as well. And you can see we can connect the battery on the inside. And we've also got a vent here. So we can now connect all the bits and pieces that we need and we can use the plumbing fittings that we usually use. This is a John Guest fitting, so we can put push fittings in here and then vent the battery to the outside. Uh, these boxes are being used in our workshop already and we soon have them on sale at perthpro.com.au and uh, there's, there's two versions of these. One is always just a simple bottom mount, the other one is a corner mount just in case you have to mount these in a corner somewhere which quite often happens and you can't access the side feet. We've got different mounting options for these. Uh, so in case you've been looking for something like this to get your installations done, these are soon going to be available. And in case you've got one of these campers and you are wondering how to get off grid, get in touch with us. Uh, there's a contact uh, form on klarman.com.au. Send us an email, we'll get in touch with you and we can give you a quote on how to get your caravan off grid properly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you for the next video.